we heard from voters that, and, and a lot of them were Republican voters mm -hmm. as we were leading up to this, that Donald Trump, the guy who is divisive, the guy who goes off topic, the guy who goes after her saying she wasn't black and now she is black. They don't understand why he's doing that. They think he has a story to tell. It's kind of what you were talking about um, in the next, uh, in the last um, conversation. But for those who know Donald Trump is somebody who could eviscerate somebody on a, on a stage, he did it certainly in some of the primaries. Mm -hmm. um, did she leave any doubt that that guy isn't there anymore? I think a couple things. I, I think certainly, you know, we talked about this for a year now, that the Trump campaign was targeting African-Americans, especially African-American men and Latinos. And so I was interested to see going into tonight what we would say, what, what the Trump campaign would say to them, right? Obviously, now knowing they're not running against a white male, it's, it's, a, it's a black female. And I think one of the things is, look, we, they knew this question was coming. They, they had clearly prepped for this. What I was interested to see was how does he parry it? How does he try and pivot to what he wants to get on his main ground, maybe attract some of those African-American men? And I think what we saw was the relitigation of, again, the past comments, and he spent way too much time on the defensive, I was surprised he, he didn't find a way to pivot out of it and get on more solid ground, because we knew that was going to be a safe and strong issue for her. We have seen for a very long time, and, and, and we have Congresswoman, uh, we have you back, let me see, is she there? Yeah, there you, there you go, Donna, it's good to see you. Uh, we, were, we were talking about the role of race and what you think that it told us last night as you were watching the debate, what did we learn about it as an issue in this campaign? Well, I think we learned that Kamala Harris has actually learned a lot from 2008 with Barack Obama and the birtherism claims to Hillary Clinton and the 2016 uh, campaign, and that she's taken those lessons to heart. And that is that she doesn't have to be the one to bring up race and, and gender, that Donald Trump does that on his own, and then he flubs it. And it's there for the American people to see. And so I think she's been very smart in the way that she's handled this. She's leaning into her role as commander in chief, as a leader um, and on the policy front and let Donald Trump do all of his racism, sexism, uh, gender misidentification uh, that happens. And uh, I think that's going to serve her well. Yeah. I, look, this is not a guy who prepares and he actually seems very proud of the fact that I've, my whole life was a preparation for this debate. It's something he said before, but it did seem like he had practiced one moment and it was a moment that really copied something that Kamala Harris had done. Let me play it. Okay, they're all laughing at it. She gave up at least 12 and probably 14 or 15 different policies. Like, she was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out, wait a minute, I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? Don't she it does sound familiar. It was a reference, obviously, to Harris's debate um, with Mike Pence, where she said, I'm speaking. Those are always hard to pull off. Yeah. Why? He, he was making a point, and, and then he went... Didn't, didn't have that. the I'm speaking coming from the other side. I, I, I figured it would be coming from the Harris campaign. But, no, look, I, I will say this. I, I remember those exact words. He said that in the first debate in 2015. So that, that's been his, uh, what, what he said. He's like, I've been prepping for this my whole life. But one of the, the things was, the last day against Joe Biden, he did clearly prep. His, his answer on abortion was much better than we, mm -hmm. than we saw last night. He was in control much more. Um, and, and you're right. There was evidence of prep coming out. The closing statement, I thought, was very strong. Candidates usually memorize that. Well, but, but, but you're right. Well, let me ask you this. Because yeah. yeah. the, the one question I have, people, so people say, what's the one question? I said, my question is, Donald Trump knows the question is coming. Mm -hmm. Will you veto an abortion ban? Yeah. He didn't have an answer. No, I think he but the, didn't answer. That has been that, that, but that has been his consistent answer. To be fair, he's been his consistent answer for a while now. And I mean, that I have no answer. Well, no, no, that they, they, they say, look, it'll never, it'll never come to that. J.D. Vance, I think, went and, and said that the veto part, which was new and new. I'm always skeptical on both sides when they say I don't want to deal in hypotheticals. What would you do? Yeah. No, I, I see what you're what saying. What is your position? Yeah, I see what you're saying. And look, I, I, I think it's one of those where he spent, we spent a lot of time litigating abortion on the defense. He tried to go on offense a little bit, but it didn't always work. But it was a lot of relitigation of things that weren't his strong suits. And it, he found it hard to pivot to things that were in his benefit. Uh, Congresswoman, the New York Times did an interesting breakdown. They found total time speaking 
and attacking. So Trump spent 30 percent of his total time on the attack. Harris far more, 46 percent. I mean, she's pushed herself as a candidate of joy. And, and a debate is one thing, right, when your opponent is Don, Donald Trump, maybe in particular. But strategically, does she stay in attack mode? How does she find that balance if she's going to make people feel good about what this country can be? She thinks she found the balance because what she did is she would launch an attack, but then she would pivot toward the positive. She would pivot toward uh, the future. And I think that's what you have to do with Donald Trump. You can't just let him get away with saying anything and then um, and not have an answer for it. And so you notice that um, she would attack him and then she would go right to where she is on issues and where she stands on policy and looking toward the future. And she did it in a way um, that was a little bit off putting for him because I think he's used to um, going on the attack mode when there's confrontation. He's not accustomed to doing it when somebody is attacking him with a smile and then turning to the uh, to the camera. And so it made him actually quite uncomfortable with the kinds of attacks that she was launching.